Hi everyone, happy Tuesday. So, um, my upcoming trip actually is going to give me the kick in the pants I need to start this series, which I've been wanting to start for a long time. I've owned this book here, American Cryptids, uh, for months, and I've wanted to start a special cryptid series where, um, kind of similar to my Golden Girls one, where I talk about the cryptids a little bit, like the information about them as we color them, and then, like, probably the rest of it's just a casual coloring chat, because I don't anticipate most of these are going to have deep enough lore to cover the whole video. But, um, been trying to do this, have not had a chance to, however, my brother and I are driving to Philadelphia to attend a gaming convention, and on our way there, we'll be going, we will be going through West Virginia, and um, last year, he pointed out that there's a cryptid uh, in a town there called Point Pleasant that is the ho home place of one of the cryptids in this book, and so I thought, what better way to start off this series than talking about that one? And so we're going to do that, and I'll talk a little bit about the past few weeks, my upcoming trip. Um, I anticipate this will be a shorter video, but y'all know how long when did I get. Um, but we're going to see how it goes. This is, I'm going to go ahead and warn you, this is not going to be like an absolute, well, any picture could be a work of art, but this isn't exactly something I spent a ton of time on. This is just kind of a fun project series and just something a little different out there. Um, this book is published by Paranoid America, which I really, Paranoid American, which I really just hope is just a random publishing company and not um, like some weird um, inside job-esque network that knows more than they're letting on. But it is a very cute book. I should have flipped through it at the beginning of this video. You will have to excuse, or hopefully you can excuse that this is going to be a little chaotic. Um, trying to get this done before I head out. And um, this has a number of different ones. And I'll show you that in the next video, like a uh, flip through at the beginning. It labels them all when they were first reported and their location. And uh, quite a few in there I know about. Ones that I have never heard of before. So, um, this should be fun, and like I said, it's a really good setup to the series, and, um, so yeah, we are going to get started. Let me flip over to the actual action. All right, so offhand, does anybody know, uh, what's in Point Pleasant, West Virginia? Anybody? Bueller, Bueller, um, that would be, if I can open it up here, Mothman, so yes, uh, Mothman, according to this book, hang on, <laughs> I've done lost my place, was, um, first seen, where'd you go, oh my goodness, see, I don't have the number, pages numbered either, which doesn't help, are you kidding me? So we're going to do something a little different with Mothman here. Um, in honor of Pride Month, we are going to do a Rainbow Mothman because really and truly, there's been some sightings, but it's been dark. Do we really know what Mothman looks like? And you know, maybe he wants to be a little festive this month. So we're going to color Mothman rainbow colors because why not? And so you'll see here, I'm holding a whole mess of Ohuhu markers. Now this is Amazon printed paper. Um, I'm going to attempt to do a rainbow blend. And so I have pulled a number of Ohuhu markers to do this. These are the brush tips. I'm going to have to work quickly, which is why I've pulled them all at once. And it still isn't precise as you will see as I go along. Um, and, um, what was I going to say? Amazon paper dries quickly. It is not really made for blending. And generally you have to work quickly like this in order to get a blend. And so mine isn't perfect, but I do my best. Now you may also be wondering, hey, if it's rainbow, why aren't you starting out with red? Well, that's because 
the one thing we do know about Mothman is that his eyes are red. And so I didn't want the red eyes to get lost on a red head. So we're doing backwards rainbow colors. Um, we're doing yellow, orange, and red at the top. Then we're doing purple, blue, and green. So we're kind of doing opposite rainbow colors, so to speak, if that makes any sense. Okay. So Mothman was first reported November 12th, 1966 in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, which has a, a great shrine to him in town. And they also have a Mothman museum. They have all kinds of goodies. Let me pull up my documents here. Any, anything I speak to, I will list my sources in the description. And before anybody comes after me about like um, accuracy and things like that, listen, these are, <laughs> these are not real creatures. At least none have been fully confirmed. We know for sure they're like living next door and getting in a suit every day, complaining about returning to the office because they'd rather work from home. Like these are fantasy creatures, right? So like, take what I say with a grain of salt, whether or not it's true or fact or not, um, is not what we're debating here. We're just having fun. Okay. So please don't come at me in regards to accuracy or anything like that. I will cite my sources. Um, and you, and all I say is that I guess if you want to make sure you're getting accurate information on mythic creatures, then, um, be sure to do your own research, um, is I guess what I'm going to say to that. So, uh, Mothman in West Virginia for folklore, and this is from Wikipedia, is a humanoid creature reportedly seen in Point Pleasant, um, from roughly November 15th, 1966 to December 15th, 1967. Um, they actually did a newspaper uh, article. So there were two couples from Point Pleasant um, in November that basically come tearing out of the woods, telling police they'd seen a large black creature whose eyes glowed red standing at the side of the road near what's called the TNT area. And I'll get into that in a minute. Um, they, uh, apparently, it is Roger and Linda Scarberry and Steve and Mary Millette. Uh, Linda Scarberry described it as a slender, muscular man about seven feet tall with white wings. However, she was unable to discern its face due to the hypnotic effects of its eyes. Ooh, very, very hypnotoed moment there. Um, distressed, they sped away, saying the creature flew after their car, pursued them as far as Point Pleasant city limits. So, um, there was a book published about Mothman called The Mothman Prophecies. Um, there are paranormal events related to the sightings. There's also a connection for the Mothman to the collapse of the Silver Bridge, which I believe is in Point Pleasant. Why, where's my information on this? Hello? There you go. That book, The Mothman Prophecies, was later adapted into a 2002 film starring Richard Gere. I have not seen that myself, so I cannot tell you for sure um, how, you know, how good it is or whatever. So the Silver Bridge collapse happened in, on December 15, 1967. Um, it collapsed amid heavy rush hour traffic, resulting in the deaths of 46 people, two of which were never found. Um, supposedly, investigation of the wreckage pointed to the failure of a single eye bar in one of the suspension chains. Um, however, the big reason the big reason Mothman is tied to the Silver Bridge is because a lot of people saw him on the bridge prior to its collapse. So basically, they are saying that he, uh, you know, is foretelling of bad events or maybe he's creating the bad events according to some people me i personally think mothman uh gets a lot of negative uh negative press for just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time like if you've ever seen the bad luck brian meme um maybe he's just bad luck right like maybe wherever he goes bad stuff just happens maybe he's not uh, for telling it. Maybe he's not the cause of it. Maybe it just shit happens when he's around, you know? Like, I, I, I get that. Me, personally, I identify with Mothman in that regard that I feel like I bring a lot of bad luck to any situation I come across. So, 
um, kind of feel for Mothman there in regards to that. I feel like he gets a bad rap. Now, what they think is more than likely the descriptions and sightings fit what's called the Sandhill Crane, which is a large American crane, almost as tall as a man, with a seven foot wingspan, seven foot wingspan and reddish coloring around its eyes. The bird may have wandered out of its migration route and therefore was unrecognized at first because it's not native to this region. Mmm, that seems pretty suspicious to me. For one thing, you're telling me there... I mean, okay, it's not Mothman, but it's a gigantic uh, man-sized crane with a seven-foot wingspan. <laughs> like, that sounds pretty terrifying in of itself. But, um, oh, it just happened to be... Not even though it's not native to the area, it just happened to be there, right? So, um, anyway, um, let's see. So, following the Silver Bridge collapse, the incident gave rise to legend and connected the Mothman sightings to the bridge collapse. Um, of course, uh, the site that he was found near the TNT area was basically the site of a former World War II munitions plant. And um, that military storage site, a lot of people think, is his home. Of course, there might be r radiation involved there. Um, apparently, um, folklorist Jan Harald Brunven noted that Mothman has been widely covered in popular press, with some claiming sightings connected with UFOs and then suggesting the storage site is his home. Noted the recountings of the 66-67 Mothman reports usually state at least 100 people saw Mothman, with many more, quote, afraid to report their sightings. Again, I feel like the dude probably gets a bad rap. He probably was just out minding his own business, you know, accidentally got seen by some people, got spooked then you know hung out the bridge a little bit just for funsies and then that happened now he's like man i can't even go out in public anymore like they're just going to associate everything with me um let's see hoaxes of course have followed including groups of construction workers who tie flashlights to helium balloons <laughs> also a bard B-A-R-R-E-D owls um, can have similar glowing eyes uh, that is like the red effect when light flashes over their eyes. Kind of like a cat's eyes or whatever um, where they get those glowing red eyes. So if they had like a flashlight in the woods or something, it's very possible that's what the eye shine was. It wasn't red eyes. It was just the, the reflection of the flashlight. So... Um, you know, he, it, I feel like Mothman's been pretty quiet since then, though. Um, apparently, I think there was a sighting in 2016, supposedly. Somebody took a photo. Um, and um, I'm trying to find it. I'll have, to, I'll have to link the video because the video is pretty darn funny. And you look at the, the picture and like now... I mean, in 2016, we weren't really doing AI or all that very much yet. So, like, I could see why it was a thing back then. But even then, it's still a blurry picture. They never get clear pictures of these things. Um, and uh, so, anyway, they some pseudoscience, I love that pseudoscience, um, suggests the Mothman could be an alien, a supernatural manifestation, or previously unknown species of animal. Um... So, uh, yeah, that is pretty much, like I said, not a lot on Mothman. However, Point Pleasant has fully embraced their weirdness, and I, I admire them for that. They have a giant Mothman statue in the middle of town. Um, a lot of people there wholeheartedly believe in Mothman. They have a Mothman museum, which, yes, we will be going to see. And um, I think there's a couple other things there in town. Um, I think there's also a state park there and some other cool things that we're going to check out because we just like that kind of historical stuff too. And um, so, um, but yeah, Mothman's been pretty quiet. Like I said, kind of a sighting in 2016, but for the most part, he's been smart enough to stay, 
stay out of out of the limelight so maybe he just doesn't get as much attention as some of the others these days just because you know now some people uh, there's a lot of possible mothman sightings in the different youtube uh videos like sometimes i'll listen to those scary stories like to put you to sleep thing which i only listen to during the day i can't do that at night it, it would keep me up but during the day i can happily snooze to it and uh, a lot of people think they see mothman in those stories so but as you can see here i am trying my best with rainbow mothman um some of the blends were not as seamless as i wanted them to be but that's okay you know mothman he's out there in the dark trying to paint himself in the woods there isn't hardly any light he is doing his very best right like he he wants to celebrate and be festive maybe he thinks you know this will be um people won't freak out so bad if he shows up in his his rainbow attire but like i said it's a little dark out there so you know some of his stuff looks a little little scrungly not all the colors flow quite as well as he had planned he's he's doing his best here but um anyway so <laughs> as you can see as much as i love doing like transitions to different colors you can see here why I don't do it very often with markers. First off, you have to have a lot of markers and a lot of very slight color variations between them in order to really achieve a good um, transition. But B, you also have to have paper that will allow you to blend that. Um, Amazon paper is not very good at blending, so that's where you're you know, seeing some obvious lines here. And um, so... Um, yeah now i'm searching for a marker i had a whole stack of these markers but yeah not a ton on mothman unfortunately he is kind of like i said one that doesn't have very very deep lore in the grand scheme of things i will talk about the mothman festival though so point pleasant does hold an annual mothman festival uh in september every year i think and they started in 2002 and they chose, of course, Mothman to be the center of the festival. And at one point, I'm not sure what year this was done, but the average attendance is about 10 to 12,000 people a year. So um, it's the third weekend of every September. They have guest speakers, vendor exhibits, pancake eating contests. These are my kind of people. Man, big old stack of pancakes. Mm-hmm and hayride tours of locally notable areas so that's pretty cool i am also going to link might be the point pleasant site i was looking yesterday and they were showing like um they were showing the mothman museum and they were showing um like the other things that were there Oh, okay. Well, that looks a lot nicer than the site I was at. The site I was at was like circa early 2000s um, style site. But I'll post some links at the bottom, like if you want to learn a little more about Mothman. Um, there may be a whole lot of books out there that really go into more detail about him. But the gist of it is a lot of people saw him in the 60s. Um, he was there before a bridge collapse. So, you know, people think he's like a doom uh, doom bringer basically he's foretelling like horrible events and some people claim to have seen him before other major events um I, i'm assuming in the u.s but maybe worldwide i don't know he might be might be a global traveler especially if he's you know if he's from outer space and he's actually an alien i mean i'm sure i'm sure he gets around um he's he's not just uh just america you know he he travels the world um but <laughs> apparently the festival brings in more people than the actual town has. <laughs> i can't imagine i can't imagine like and see i love that though i love that a town embraces its local legends like that my town was known for the littlest railroad tunnel in the world and um of course it's you know gonna put my town in there if you go looking for that um but like 
it's just sitting there growing weeds, gathering dust. So, of course, it used to be a big train station right in the middle of town. We had a bunch of trains coming through. Oh, here's Mothman and all his rainbow glory. I was still trying to figure out how to do his wings. But, of course, me being the person I am and... Um, and, of course, what Rainbow Mothman isn't going to be dramatic. Let's embrace a black background. So that's what I'm going to start working on here. And we'll probably cut some of this out. Um, I'm just kind of getting a feel for how long this video should be. So, <laughs> so I said today was going to be a little, little bit different. Um, I went off track. I don't know what I was talking about. Oh, love it. What, so... My town had a train station right through the middle of town. People would take the train every day. Of course, it was a hustle and bustle in town because it was on the train route. Then um, they rerouted the trains and then it started really moving into more small town status. But apparently at one point, it, a part of that uh, route was the Lewis Railroad Tunnel. And um, this town could have, I mean, for railroad enthusiasts, like... They are passionate, and I just, when I was on the council, I really wanted to see us turn into, like, embrace some of that uniqueness about our town, like the fact that it had the train depot, it had that tunnel, use that to build, like, a visitor um, base, and, like, have festivals and stuff like that, and maybe we could have got there one day, but um, our town is struggling so much just to keep the lights on and pay the bills, um, it is, if somebody had had enough sense to develop that 10, 20 years ago, um, maybe early 2000s, like, it would have been a huge boon to the city and I think would have made a difference now. But now they're just so far along, like, there's really, and there's grants and stuff, and we did a lot of grant applying. We did a lot of festivals and fundraising and things like that. But a lot of times with those grants, you also have to match, uh, like, the amount of the grant and stuff. So the city does have to have funding for that kind of thing. So, um, but that's why I was going to say, like, it's a shame that more small towns. Now, obviously, the smallest railroad tunnels, a whole lot different than a giant man with moth wings flying around telling you bad things are going to happen just by happening to be there in a situation <laughs> like like come on the way my life's been lately I feel like if I walk in a room people are like oh damn Michelle's here um put on put on your, your construction hats and let everybody run for cover because something bad's gonna happen like I totally get it I feel like mi mo poor Mothman's misunderstood and that's probably why he's I mean why would you want to be out and about? If everybody thinks you just bring bad luck and bad fortune with you, why would you be out in public, right? No wonder he's such an introvert. But anyway, he's trying. He's trying his best. So, all right. Let me see if I can at least... Where are we at here on time? Let me see if I can pop us over to filling in this black background at least. Yep, there we go. So... <laughs> Instead of speeding it up today, I'm giving you uh, the, the same pace at which I colored this, but we're just cutting parts out. So, um, but yeah, that's pretty much Mothman here. I don't know who we're going to go with next. Um, I'll just have to look through and kind of figure out a pattern. Um, but like I said, I just thought this would be fun, a little different. Um, if it's not your thing, I totally understand. Um, like I said, these won't be entirely cryptid focused. So if you just like regular colors and color and chats and don't really care about cryptids or whatever, um, you can always jump, you know, I'll provide jump links down in the description. So, um, but yeah, I am pre-recording this as I should be doing other things like I why I do this to myself like the day before I leave I'm like I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna have this big laundry list of things um actually this wasn't gonna be the video I posted um and it's funny because like I thought I had time to finish that um I was gonna do a watercolor uh summer video 
However, when I was talking to Tammy, so um, Watercolor Summer, by the way, is, if you don't know, is uh, hashtag Watercolor Summer 2024 is my tag that I'm doing all summer long. I'm co-hosting with Tammy from Tammy Colors 2. Uh, Christopher Michaels from Christopher Christopher's Corner is also participating and uh, is co-hosting. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to do any videos or not, but we'll see. Um, but he is also co-hosting. I didn't want to forget him on that one. And um, so uh, we were talking about like video frequency and things like that. And I was supposed to post a video last week and I'll talk about in a minute why I didn't. Um, but I was gonna, I had a page out of Joshua, one of Joshua Dunbar's books uh, based in the super colors last night. And I was going to do the demo of the Karen Dash Super Colors and the Artisto colored pencils on top. Again, this time though with Amazon Paper just to see how they react differently. Because Amazon Paper, as you can see, is very difficult to work with in terms of anything water-based or wet. It doesn't want to blend well. Um, the page can get crinkly if it's super water-based, which alcohol markers aren't. Um, but if you're using water-based markers or watercolor pencils, sometimes with watercolor pencils and watercolors, you need a lot of water to put it on the paper. And so what I wanted to see is if the super colors would not break down the paper too much because maybe you don't have to add as much water to uh, blend those out. Kind of like my museum aquarelles. And the super colors are also Karen Dash, but they're slightly cheaper than the museum aquarelles and they're also 120 set as opposed to 75 72 um so anyway you will see that next week though i um that will give me time to add the pencil layer on top anyway but um anyway this was tammy's week she might be posting a video and so i didn't want to give you two watercolor videos in one week if you look at the top right if you still want to see a watercolor video uh, Tammy did post one uh, two weeks ago out of the Cats and Soup book, which I found um, on Etsy and is super cute. So if you want to go check that out, and then my video will be next week. I'm thinking about every other week schedule right now. Um, then if, you know, Chris wants to post videos too, I'm going to post them on the community page when anybody, uh, any of the three of us have a watercolor summer picture uh, video. There we go. If you want to participate in Watercolor Summer 2024, mostly Instagram is where it can be. But you can also, I think, do hashtags on YouTube and stuff. But um, basically, if you color a picture with any sort of medium that uses water, it counts. It's a very flexible tag. So water-based markers, Crayola Super Tips uh, count. Um, if it's watercolor pencil, you activate with water ink tints even though it's not technically watercolor but you activate it with water um, we're coloring with water you're using water somewhere in this equation um, gelatos neo colors regular watercolors um, i'm trying to think of what else all kinds of things if you even acrylic washes would count because your gouache would count because you're using water to dilute the acrylic paint um, would count so um, anyway just uh, add that tag to your picture and we used to do showcases um, however I think the changes to Instagram make it hard to see everybody's pages but I might try to sh you know take some screenshots, do something, if not every month, maybe by the end of the summer. This is going to run from June to September, so you have plenty of time. The reason I like doing this tag is A, um, official watercolor month is July. And also, when it comes to water and coloring books, it can be very daunting. It can be very scary to use them. It can be scary to use them in your nice books. It can be scary to use them on Amazon paper because Amazon paper doesn't really like water. So you have to kind of learn the nuances and how to play with it, but you can make it work. And so what I like to do with this tag is demo new things, try new things, um, show, show people how you can use water and, and what products may use less water. So for instance, 
I found, yes, the Museum Aquarelle watercolor pencils are very uh, not budget friendly. Like they're very expensive pencils. However, I have found that they do phenomenal on Amazon paper because they require very little water to dissolve the pigment. Um, but if you didn't want to splurge for those pencils, you could use something like a Neocolor or something like that, where if it's not dissolving on the paper enough, you're having to use more water, then you could always scrub it on a palette, pick it up with the brush there and put it on the paper. So there's like a lot of different ways around it. And so this is just kind of an exploratory fun tag and just encouraging people to that, you know, Yes, using water in your books can be scary, but it also can be a lot of fun. And it's one of my favorite ways to base pages before I put pencil over the top of them. Actually, the challenge for me is to use watercolor layers to build up a picture and walk away satisfied rather than having to use more mediums on the paper. Like I would like to do more of that. And so that's kind of what I'm hoping to grow into this summer. So. You will see that from me next week. You can go check out Tammy's video from a couple weeks ago. She may have another one this week. I will post it on the community page as she does. And then of course, if Chris posts videos, I will um, share his as well. So there is that in regards to watercolor summer. Um, so reason I haven't posted the last few weeks, I have just, we had some family uh, health issues come up and I'm not going to go into detail because, um, hang on a second. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail because it is, is not me and not my health. And so, um, but it is ongoing health concerns and it kind of put some things up in the air, like over the next few weeks, what we were going to do. And, um, so far it seems like that my brother and I are going to go ahead and go on our trip um everything seems to be going well but any of course any <laughs> kind thoughts or prayers you could throw our way would be appreciated um still very nervous about it I get nervous going on these trips obviously because of this but also my cat some of my cats have chronic health conditions and while my husband thankfully stays here to uh keep the place running um and take care of the cats he is not a big travel person um for example when we, um when i had to go on a work trip last january we think she had a small stroke when i came back just due to the whole stress of the week her blood pressure got up and she um ended up having a small stroke which she's recovered completely from oh here you can see i'm using a gold acrylic pen that came from a set that chris gifted me i had only had a chance to use them on one other page so far and i really like them they're very opaque they're very shiny and i decided what i was going to do with mothman's wings so we're going to do rainbow colors and glitter gel pens but i'm only going to fill in little bits and pieces and just outline the rest of the wings because they did say his wings should be white and i wanted to keep them mostly white but i wanted to add of course a pop of color um because that's how we're rolling right now so that's what i'm tackling next here but um so come to find out Winry has a heart murmur that was progressing from November. It was progressing even in April a little bit. And so she is on blood thinner now because that does increase her chance of stroke. My big concern is being gone for a week and her, because I am her primary person that she likes, um, that she's going to get so stressed out that, you know, it's going to make her sick again. And um, we've done everything we can. I took her and Bagheera in on Friday for a checkup. Um, thankfully, her, her heart murmur has not progressed since April. Um, she is good to go with her Plavix once a day. And then she's also going to get some amateur lean once a day just to help chill out a little bit. And the vet seemed confident that the Plavix should help avoid that situation again. So... Um, I hope she's okay, um, but I have tried to avoid traveling up to this point because of that, but um, I just, um, I think she'll be all right. 
and also had to take bigger and he has been having some weakness in his back legs the last few months i was concerned that the cushings that he was diagnosed with last year it which ca can cause some muscle weakness had advanced a little bit um and it turns out that yes it probably is due to his cushings but his blood sugar, which has been stable for years, now is totally out of whack um, because the Cushing's is messing around with his endocrine system. So we made some modifications to his insulin. Um, she said we just went up just a little bit on it. Then she wants him to come back in next Tuesday and we're going to adjust from there. Um, I've got him set up for the week. My husband hates needles, but he is going to give him his injections twice a day. Um, be, his blood sugar has been stable for years we've been hardly giving him any insulin he's probably had it I don't know 10 years at this point it's been a long time and uh, he's went from a substantial amount down to hardly anything and and so like we've been able to be a little more lax like if he only got a daily dose for three or four days if I was away it wasn't a big deal because he, he was so stable but now that it's kind of out of whack we've really got to start sticking to a you know meticulous schedule so um, but, uh, but the good news there, the even better news from that is if we get his blood sugar stable, um, some of that strength will come back in his legs. And I was worried it was progressive. So that made me really happy. Um, I still think we have a ways to go on his blood sugar just based on he's using the litter box more, he's drinking more water, but I have noticed he does seem a little stronger in his back legs since we moved up a little bit on the insulin. So I'm, um feeling good a little better this time about leaving um just because everybody seems to be in a pretty good place except of course Leroy is his stomach's upset again today I don't know what's going on there I don't know how <laughs> it's just like random days he will wake up and his stomach's upset he's like this very fragile southern plantation kind of woman that has the fainting couch and stuff and is very dramatic and I think the reason he's throwing up today is because he knows I'm going somewhere and so now he's upset because he gets very anxious very easily and he does have amitriptyline which helps but you know he gets like this with thunderstorms so like I mean I can't I try very hard to keep his stress level low but there are just certain things that we just have to accommodate for it's not like I go on vacation every single month right like so um and plus it would be different if you know my husband wasn't here but because he's here too um it I don't think it'll be as bad I think once he realizes that my husband's still here he will relax I think he's more stressed just because he thinks we're both going somewhere he saw my suitcase come out yesterday and he's smart he's smarter than he looks he knows um winner he knows because she's been clinging to me um but I feel like I've had some really good cuddle time with everybody except Bimo who doesn't want to cuddle um this will be the first time I've left her left the house for more than a couple hours since we got her so this will be interesting um she is pretty self-sufficient though so I um I am not too worried about her I think she'll be all right but all the food's ready. Everything's prepped. I just have to wrap up work today. And um, I'm going to go take a nap. Because the past few days have been crazy. Um, but no, just with the health issues. from It's immediate family member with the health issues. And they were in the hospital for a while. And I just didn't have it in me to do videos or even color really um they they've been out of the hospital and doing well since wednesday but however this weekend i was still very plus i had to ration some of my medicine this weekend because again i'm having i still cannot get my pre-authorization from my doctor's office for my medicine my ssni i take Savella, and i can't get anybody to call me back and so I was trying to get it done before I had to pay another $500 for this month's med. And I waited a day or two too late to renew it. So I had to go through the weekend at half a dose. And if you've ever taken an SSNI like Savella or Effexor, you know what that's like. Um, you're not even supposed to quit those. Like any antidepressant, you're not supposed to just stop 
cold turkey but like those in particular you're even supposed to carefully ration down from them and oh my gosh this weekend my skin was on fire I felt plus I felt like I was gonna jump through my skin like it was pretty crazy um I hate hate that medicine I hate there's not a generic I hate that no insurance seems to want to cover it and it's so hard to get a pre-authorization for it and more than anything I hate that I need it to function like a normal human being because when I tell y'all I got my medicine Monday morning and by I took it a full dose at eight or nine o'clock that morning by 11 or 12 o'clock yesterday I felt like a normal human being again it was crazy it was crazy and it just it really makes me angry <laughs> and I now in good news I told y'all I've had insomnia for years I have had to take prescription sleeping medication and it has been very difficult to get off of it even though you're not supposed to take it long term but I am here to tell y'all that in a month I have had to take Ambien three times I took a half dose the very first the day I refilled it and then I had to take no three four times I had to take it this weekend when I couldn't sleep because of the other issues my, I was having due to my other meds because um, I just could not sleep and um, that's been it y'all uh, for a month I when I tell y'all I just never thought I could do this I just every time I tried before I wouldn't sleep for four days or five days I would try I would try as long as I could just to make sure it got fully out of my system and I would just desperate I mean, I would not be a recognizable human <laughs> by the end of it. And I would have to take one because I would have to, like, I have to work. I have to function, right? I can't just take a six-month sabbatical and do this. And, um, and sleep affects me. Like, if I can't sleep well, it just messes everything up. Uh, everything else going on in my health, it just screws it up. So, I am so happy about that. Now, if I could just get off this other thing... I would be over the moon thrilled, but that is going to be a bigger task. And I am right now, the way things are going, I am not in the headspace to be doing that right now. So, um, but there's been a lot of, it's just been really busy and like crazy things happening in May and June. And I've been just trying to juggle everything. Then that ball dropped the last few weeks. And now I'm scared because I felt like I was actually, I felt like things were starting to turn around and I was feeling pretty optimistic. And if you've been around here for a hot minute, you know, every time I get the feeling that way, something always happens. And I know people are like, oh, that's just life. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. I am a bad luck Brian. I am the Mothman. Like it, the moment, and, and maybe that's it with Mothman. Maybe the moment he starts feeling optimistic, like he can go out and maybe go to a restaurant or go see a movie in a movie theater and nobody's going to scream and run from him. Like, you know, <laughs> anyway. Um, so now I'm just really scared, like, to even feel optimistic, because I just, and I just don't think my therapist gets it. I try to explain to her, and I just don't think she understands to what level I am convinced that I am controlling. <laughs> I don't know what I've done to tick off the universe, but it is all within my control, apparently. But, um, you know, it's just been, last few weeks been real hard. I know I sound peppy today but this is follows like weeks of me just barely making it day to day um and um it's also knowing that I have hopefully a week and a half off and I just really need that in my life so um anything else big I can think of yeah because the next color and chat next week will just be recapping the trip um, I don't want to sit here. I was like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that while I'm out and this and that. But you know what? Every time I do that, it's like I said, every time I start to build momentum, things go awry. So we're just, we're just not going to say it. We're just going to say, if things go well, I have plans. Now, 
that uh does look a little messy i actually um at one point do do take it off video and clean it up when you're doing gel pen and you have like my eyesight's not the best even with a strong light um, I can color it like this and it looks, everything looks fine, but then I hold it up to where I can actually see it like right in front of my eyes and I can see all these little areas I didn't color and all these little areas that didn't fill in. So I had to spend a good 10, 20 minutes cleaning up all this gel pen work. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, no, just, I'm just going to simply say, you know, hopefully... Hopefully things continue to go well and this turns into a fun trip. I'm a little worried I'll be distracted given recent events, but you know, it we'll we'll see. Um so what am I taking with me? Y'all are probably like, hey, are you gonna take color and stuff and stuff with you? Yeah, um I was I was tempted to take my laptop, but I'm the type of gamer, I need like three or four hours to really get some work done in a game, like do some grinding in the game. Disney Dreamlight Valley is one I'm playing a lot right now, and that involves a lot of like collecting, foraging, growing gardens, things like that. And like I need a good chunk of time, like three or four hours to do that. And I'm not a very... Um, I get distracted very easily. I can't socialize and chat while I'm playing a game when I do that. So I don't want to take that with me. However, I am going to take some coloring books with me. I've got my Summer Vibes Color by Number by Alexandra Franzese I'm currently working through. I have a new Alice Mills Publishing book I'm working on. Not like new to me. Like I just started in it. Um, I've got the Sleep that new sleep small square book that R.J. Hampson uh, published. I want to start in that. I have Color Me Capybaras. Um, I'm actually really enjoying coloring in that. And I want to do another page. I had like eight or nine books. And I had to trim out half of them. Because I was like there's no way. I also packed a lot of mosaic art Halloween for fun. Because I haven't done Halloween page in forever. And I'm kind of missing it. I'm taking my big Ohuhuth, um I don't have a 320 set. What do I have? 216? I'm taking my 216 set because we're traveling by car. I normally can't take alcohol markers with me because I'm flying everywhere. So this time, you best believe I'm bringing the big kahuna with me because it has a nice little strap on the bag. And um, I might even take like some video of it or something at some point. Um, and... I'm taking the Artisto colored pencils. I do have a page in uh, hairballs that I'm working in that, uh, what am I doing here? I don't know. Um, I do have a page in furballs or whatever that one by Diane Dufour that I'm working in. I've had, I put super color base. I just need Artisto pencils over the top. We're going to try the Artisto shading, probably a marker base and some Artisto shading with the RJ Hampson book and I'm taking two woobles with me if I want to do some crocheting and I think that's it I might look at our games and see if I can bring a game that me and TJ can play together TJ's my brother so um I do add the Mothman here I was too lazy to get a stencil and so I kind of just freehanded it and I didn't do too bad it's not super straight but it, I, I'm actually pretty, I, I wanted it to have that kind of jagged comic book look to it though, because, um, because that was the vibe I was getting from him. And, uh, so, um, yeah, that's, uh, I've got a pencil sharpener, a glove, uh, the art glove I like to use. I've got a blush, a blush type brush I use to brush away, um, cause the Artisto pencils do uh, have a little bit of crumbliness to them. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, I usually always bring way more than I actually color in. So, um, oh, and by the way, speaking of which, um, the Summer Vibes book, I finished a page this morning. And it was sitting outside and I walked out there later and somebody had barfed on the book. And I know who it was. It was Leroy because his stomach's upset. And I looked at him and I'm like, 
look here, asshole. If you have a personal issue with how I color things, you could just tell me. You don't have to do a visual, conceptual art piece. It, this is not what we're doing here. This is not mixed. This is not mixed media, including cat barf, right? Like this is not what I'm going for. So just next time, just tell me, right? Like <laughs> you don't have to throw up on it. Anyway, that was gross. Um, I managed to get that cleaned up and there was some bleed on a couple pages, but they're all dry now. It's, it's all right. It's, it, it could have been a lot worse, but I was a little ticked. I was like, sir, there was, that was not necessary. Um, so, well, here he is in all of his rainbow glory. And I actually have to say this turned out a lot better than I was first anticipating. <laughs> I did the marker layers and I was like, oh goodness, this, this poor moth man, poor moth dude. I should have said moth dude down there. That would have been fun. Um, but like, it's okay. I added some glitter, clear glitter gel pen to him to jazz him up a little bit, of course. Um, we all want to feel sparkly and special. So, um, so should Mothman, in my opinion. I actually am really pleased with how his wings came out. Um, I didn't know how the outline would do. And I filled some little spots in, some I didn't, um, just to give it a little bit of, um, a little bit of a change. And it looks a lot better since I went back over it and, you know, really paid attention to what I was filling in. Yeah, there's a tip with glitter gel pens. Look at the glitter gel pens in different lights. So like if you're coloring it down on a desk, pick it up and hold it up in front of you and look at it. And I guarantee if you look at it from different angles, unless it is a gel pen, like a jelly roll that just oozes out gel pen. And even those, I find that there are little spots, little white spaces that I miss. And so then I have to go back over it usually once or twice to fill those in. And those gel pens I used were the so color. Actually, another gift from Chris. Jeez, Chris. Um, <laughs> but no, no, no. These weren't a gift from him. I bought these as a recommendation from him. That was it. And uh, I like those a lot. I like them because they give me more color variety than the Jell Ro Jelly Roll Sparkly, whatever they're called, Stardust. Um, I do like those because I get more color variety. So I love how his wings turned out. And um, love it with the black background. Um it was funny. I just really didn't know what I was going to do with him other than rainbow colors. And um, he actually turned out halfway decent. And my lettering wasn't the worst thing. A couple little dots down there from where our marker did splatter. I'm going to have to cover that up. But overall, I think Mothman is ready to um, get out on the town and uh, really throw those people for a loop in Point Pleasant. So I will let y'all know if we see Mothman tomorrow. Um... I would really liked. I tried to do that in January. I tried to do a blog of the work trip I had. And that was like, if you go back, that was one of the worst weeks of my life in terms of rationing medicine. I was stuck in Nashville half the time because of snow and ice. And it was just, yeah, let's not, let's not revisit. Nobody needed to see a blog of that. Um, but I would really like to kind of blog this trip and put it together. Um, but we'll see how it goes. I've wanted to do that in the past and sometimes I start out and it goes well and sometimes I'm just like, yeah, you know, we're good. But um, I'm at least going to do some pictures and highlights. Like I said, we're going to check out Point Pleasant, uh, do the Mothman thing, but they also have a really cool um, history, historical site, state park there and, some, and also the Silver Bridge uh, Memorial and things like that that we're going to go check out. And then we will be near Philadelphia on Thursday, getting ready to attend the convention, which will be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, just a shot out there. If any of you are actually going to attend that convention, my email address is down in the comments. Uh, email me. I would be thrilled to uh, say hi. <laughs> so, um, but it's a pretty big convention. They get, uh, this year, they've got a lot of voice actors, particularly from things like Genshin Impact, Baldur's Gate 3, um, what was the other one? TJ said. I don't like, the, I, I like the voice actors. Like, they did a lot of, um, Metal Gear Solid and voice actors last year in the Metal Gear series. And I like that. But, like, I wish they would do other things than just, it seems like it's all voice actors. And it drives me crazy. Like, I wish they would do a little more variety. 
but um, they have a huge marketplace though. I I am taking extra room. And this is one of the reasons we're driving is there's just so much room for things and it's so much cheaper. Guys, like last year, I'm telling you, not last year, but the year before when we flew, like we were staying in, we couldn't stay in our normal hotel this year because of renovating. So we had to get a smaller room, which was cheaper too. But like y'all normally I'm spending double what I spent, what I'm spending this year on just transportation but we're using my dad's car this year instead of a rental car we're um, getting a cheaper hotel room at the actual event and this is with a side uh extra night at a hotel and stuff so um, we take a lot of our own food with us so we don't have to do a lot of grocery shopping and stuff like that and it's just yeah i mean it's a long drive and i'm glad we're breaking it up this year um but anyway so yeah um I hope you guys have a really fantastic week. I hope, and again, me being selfish, I hope I have a fantastic week, damn it. <laughs> I feel like I'm due. I feel like we're all due. My family's due for it. Like, we're all due for it. My family member is very insistent that we go on this trip. She was like, you have worked hard all year for this. Y'all need to go. We'll be fine. Just, you know, it's okay. And so... Against, against my judgment, we're going to go, well, I think it's fine, but I'm a champion warrior, so y'all know how that goes. But yeah, no, I'll let you guys see. I mean, we're going to see Mothman, Mothman's statue. Maybe it really is Mothman. They just put him in gold. I don't know. But let me tell you, if I see somebody needs to come up with Rainbow Mothman for some of these pride events, which, I mean, it's almost the end of June, but um, I would totally do that. But yeah, if I see a rainbow-colored Mothman tra uh, traipsing around Point Pleasant, I will let you guys know. Otherwise, I promise I'll take pictures, maybe some uh, little video clips and stuff. Because um, one way or another, I'll share it. And then we'll share, like, the full convention experience and hopefully some fun things that happen in between. So, um, hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, just something fun. This is less technique, less demo, less really trying to build layers and use mixed media on a picture and just spend a lot of time on it. This is more just laid back, having fun. Um, now Mothman, I tell you, if he, if he comes and critiques me about my coloring page, I will certainly let you know. Um, <laughs> my husband said I should take it with me and uh, tape it up <laughs> to the museum without telling anybody. Do y'all know how tempted I am? Not gonna do it because then I'll lose my picture. But it, it, it is tempting. Um, I don't know. Maybe I can send it to him. Maybe they'll, if I send it to him frame, they'll post it there. Who knows? Um, I don't know. Uh, it being West Virginia, maybe, maybe they'd be all right <laughs> with that themed Mothman. But, you know, who knows? It's a pretty conservative state. So, anyway, I hope you guys have fun. Maybe you had a few laughs wasn't quite as funny as I wanted to be, but we will, uh, it will get better as we go along. And hey, I got it under an hour today. Aren't you impressed? I'm impressed. Oh my gosh, I'm going to go take a nap now. All right, um, there will be a video posted Friday of my next coloring book collection video. Um, I have nothing else scheduled right now. Um, I'm due back next, late next Monday night. And, um, I will uh, probably post that thing on Wednesday, maybe do a recap, do the demo of that picture, and um, yeah, we'll go from there. So y'all take care, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.